So today I'm going to make an item that allows you to teleport when you're holding it. It's a lemon of teleportation. So here it is. It's in my backpack. And when I click on it, I'm holding the lemon. And now I can teleport to these different areas. So there's a monster area, grass area, and home. I thought that would be a cool quest item or maybe an airdrop item or something you can get with a game pass. It gives you an advantage. You can move around the game a lot faster. And when you're done, you just put it away. The UI disappears. All right, so I will get a fresh world and you can build along with me. So here's my fresh world and I'm gonna to go to the toolbox and get a lemon. So I'll go, to, go and search for lemon and I only want a lemon. I don't want a model that has a whole bunch of stuff in it. So this is a good one right here. It's just a lemon. There's nothing in there. There's no scripts, there's no welds, there's no subparts. And let's move this lemon close to the center of the world so we don't have to run around and find it. So I'll say position, I'm gonna change that to zero, 2.4 uh, make it, so it's above the terrain, and then 10 on the, on the Z, so I don't land on it when I get into the world. So now I'm gonna hit F to frame in, oops, hit the lemon, F to frame in, and that finds your lemon. Go to your workspace and get a tool. This is gonna allow you to pick it up. So we'll say lemon, of teleportation move your lemon into the lemon of teleportation tool and now in order to to hold it you need a handle so a handle is just a part that's called handle and the roblox knows what to do with it so i hit that plus sign and i hit part make sure collisions is off because i want to move the handle inside the lemon and i'm going to do that by first well let's let's actually rename this first Let's call this handle. It won't work if it's not spelt just like that. All right, and then let's go to size. Make the size 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 by 0 0.2. And I will just copy the position of the lemon. Where's my position? There it is. Control C, click on handle, position, control V. Now the handle is inside the lemon. If I hit the move, you can see that it's in there. All right, let's weld these together. Hit the plus on the tool, hit a W, add a weld constraint, and weld constraint, click on weld constraint. Part zero, make it the lemon. Part one, make it the handle. You can do any order. If you notice here, the handle now has something called a touched interest, and it adds that at some point after you call it handle. All right, now you can pick it up. Let's try, let's try and pick it up and see if it's oriented in the right way. Oh, there we go. Ah, see that the the lemon's not really oriented correctly. I want it to be up and down. So let's go ahead and change the orientation of the handle. If I'm looking this way, my Z axis is like this. So I want to rotate it on the X axis. And I'll rotate it 90 degrees, just the handle. So go to the handle, orientation, and yeah, X axis not Z axes, 90 degrees. You won't see anything move, but now when you go and pick it up, it's gonna be up and down. And you can play with that, the, the different angles to make it perfectly aligned with this hand, but I think that's good enough. I like that. All right, let's go ahead and do some more stuff to make it work. We have our lemon, we have our tool. I'm gonna to go to the UI now under starter GUI, I get a screen GUI, and then I'm gonna do a frame. The frame, I'm just gonna move this down to where it makes sense, make it a little bigger. And I'll rename this to, let's see, how about places frame? All right, now it's gonna have my buttons for my places. And I wanna have the buttons lined up, I don't wanna to have to do that manually. So I'm gonna to go to the places frame, hit the plus, hit a U and add UI list layout. And that's going to order my, my buttons uh, one, uh, one on top of the other. So I'll add a button here, text button. Make sure you add text button, not text label. It's a little bit big. Let's call this blue button. And we'll make it blue. There we go, blue. And see here, position. This is controlled by 
it says overridden by the UI list layout. So now we don't have to mess with position. That's cool. Let's go to our size. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Size, I wanna make it one and zero. So that's 100% uh, of the parent frame and zero pixels. So that fits nice. And then on Y, I'll make this 0.3 and zero. And let's see. Let's change our font to cartoon text to blue area or monsters or whatever you want to call it. Let's just call it blue area. And I'm going to, I'm not going to hit text scale. I'm going to hit text size is 25 because we're going to have different numbers of characters and I want the text to be the same size on all of these buttons. So we got that. Let's change, uh, that's the stroke color. Let's change the text color to like yellow. And we'll put a little highlight around the letters. So text stroke transparency, zero. Can't really see it on the blue, but you'll see it on the different colors. Let's go ahead and copy the button, control D, and paste, uh, it, it paste just right, just right underneath it. And we can change the spacing. Go to UI list layout. So we have this thing called padding. And I'll just do five, five pixels. There we go. Let's make the frame invisible, background transparency. Don't make it invisible, make the background transparency one. If it's invisible, you won't be able to click on it. All right, let's go back and, and fix our blue button, blue button. We have two, we have three blue buttons. Let's make this one green. And change the text. Where's my text? Blue area, let's make a green area. Green area. I'm going to make that frame a little bigger. There we go, because orange area is going to be even bigger. Let me call that button green button. And then I'll make this one orange button. Make it orange. There we go. There's some orange. And change the text to orange area. It's blue area orange area yeah that'll work looks good all right so we have that in place go to the places frame and let's add a local script and i'm going to call this button events and that's tiny so i'll make the text bigger so you can see it there we go and we'll do a script dot parent dot blue button dot activated connect to a function i'm just gonna do a printout so i can check it let's say blue just copy this control c control v control v make this green button and green and then make this orange button and orange. All right, now let's test to see if our buttons work. You should be testing when you're coding often so you don't get too far before you find your error. So I'll go and get my view output so I can see any errors. Click the blue button, uh, it says blue, it's perfect. Green, it says green, orange, it says orange. Great, buttons are working. They're not doing anything, they're just printing something, but at least I know they're working. So, Let's go to our, let's go to our uh, tool. Before we do that, though, let's make this invisible, right? Because we only want to see that when we're holding our lemon. So we'll say visible on the places frame. Make that invisible. Now let's go back to our lemon of teleportation. Add a local script here. And I'm going to call this show places. All right. Go ahead and get rid of our print statement. And I'll do a local lemon will be script.parent. And I want to get my player. So since this is a local script, I'll say game players, local player. I'm going to get the user interface. So I'll say local p GUI for player GUI. Player wait for child. 
uh, player GUI, player GUI. And then I'll get my screen GUI, S GUI, and that's on the P GUI. Wait for child screen GUI. And then I can get my places frame. So I'll just call this um, button frame. Uh, let's call it place frame. Place frame. And that's on the screen GUI. Wait for child. S, uh, what is it? Button places frame. Rats. I should call it exactly what it was. There we go. Places frame. All right, that's good. So we have our variables. And now I'm going to do a lemon dot equipped connect function when the button frame when we're holding it or we're equipped place frame will be visible and yeah, that's true let's go ahead and copy this control C and when it's unequipped U N that's a capital that's a lowercase e right here make this false Nice. All right, let's try it. Let's try it. When we go to pick up our lemon, let's see if the button frame appears and disappears. There we go. I'll go ahead and drop it. Yeah, pick it up, drop it. Perfect. Okay, so now we want to have the buttons actually move us in the world. That's server side, buttons are client side. So we need something called a remote event. So go to replicated storage add remote event I'm gonna call this teleport re for teleport remote event and that way we can make the server do stuff from the client side that's the gateway that's what you need so fr from there let's go to our let's go to our uh, what do you call it button event script on the screen GUI on the places frame and now instead of just print statements let's send a remote event so we need to get a replicated storage game get service replicated storage local re rs wait for child so in replicated storage we're going to wait for child this teleport re teleport re right here must be this must be spelled the same as in replicated storage. So once we have that, then we can do re fire server, and I'm going to send blue over. So we hit the blue button. Let me copy. Let me actually yeah. Let me copy that, and we'll go here. Oh, you know what? I should just copy this. Copy up to here, and then paste that, and paste that. Nice. That should work. I'll get rid of this so you can see the whole script. All right, nice. Let's go to our lemon of teleportation and add a server script. And this server script is going to be called teleport. So it's just script. A, a regular script is a server script. Teleport. Once again, we have to get our replicated storage, local RS gain get service replicated storage from replicated storage we're going to get our remote event so rs replicated storage wait for child teleport re once we have that then let's get our locations where we want to go to let's go to our flat terrain and add some pads here let me look down so it doesn't go way way far away all right that pad is going to be the blue pad blue pad let's make it blue and change the size a little bit maybe 10 by 1 by 10 we can anchor it nice let's duplicate it make sure collisions are off you can control D it'll duplicate in place let's just move this over here we don't have to have them far away you can you can move them around once you create them it's gonna be the green pad and of course we have to make it green there we go. Control D again. Make another one. 
make this one the orange pad orange pad and make that orange there we go all right looking good so i want to put these in a folder go to workspace hit folder just to keep it organized i'm going to call this locations and i'm going to copy this click on that blue pad shift click on the bottom one on the orange pad that selects all of them and then drag this into locations looking good now go back to your teleport script in your lemon of teleportation and we can get references to those pads say local blue pad it's going to be workspace locations dot blue pad yeah good I'll do one for green pad workspace locations green pad and one for orange pad workspace locations orange pad cool now let's do a function for teleport and we'll get the player we're gonna get the area so when we fired that remote event that player is going to come for free. Notice we only put like a blue, if we go over here, show places, we put, not show places, uh, button event. We put a blue, we put a green, and we put an orange. When you fire a server from a, a local script, the player comes for free. That's going to be the first um, argument. And then whatever you pass then will be the second argument. So let's go ahead and determine what area we're going to go to. Say if area equals equals, blue then we need to teleport to our blue pad well we need a humanoid root part in order to teleport a character so let's go ahead and do that we'll call this hum root we'll go player character humanoid root part all right so if the hum root has something called a C frame, which controls position and orientation. And we're going to just give it a new C frame with the position of the blue pad. Cool. Now we'll say else if, it's all one word, area equals equals green pad or green, then let's do this for the green. You know what, though? We're going to teleport right inside our pad. So let's add, let's add some height to that position orientation with a vector three, five studs in the Y. And let me just recopy this whole thing. Copy, paste, change this to green pad. Whoops, that's it. Lowercase g. Cool. I'm going to copy all of this. Enter. I'm going to make this one orange. And make this orange pad. Cool beans. I'm going to make this a little smaller so it'll fit on the screen. There we go. Well, it still won't fit on the screen. That's all right. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's catch that remote event on server event connect teleport get rid of those extra parentheses and i think we're done i'm gonna make this a little smaller so we can see if we can fit the whole thing on there yeah there we go all right let's try it let's move our lemon of teleportation into our backpack go to starter pack and play the game And we can put a little icon on there. I did not. There we go. We're holding the lemon. Boom. Blue area. Green area. Orange area. Blue area. Put it away. Awesome. All right. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. And I hope you had a good, uh, a good lesson.